Uh, today we're gonna be talking about pump seals. Uh, how to replace a pump. All right, I got Bill here. Bill, what we got going on here today? We've got a Tayco 900 series pump. It's a direct drive pump. Uh, the only re uh, replaceable part on this pump is the pump seal or a motor. So the two items that you have for maintenance would be your motor and your pump seal. Uh, motors uh, usually don't have problems unless you have some issues with your electricity. Uh, but uh, the pump seal is, is a item that uh, depends on clean water and the right temperature. Uh, overheating of your liquid in your pump cavity will cause a seal to fail or any type of foreign material within the water will uh, get on the face of the seal surface and it creates a pathway for the water to leave. Uh, a seal is called a mechanical seal or a water seal. The reason they call it a water seal, you have two surfaces and the only thing that keeps uh, the water from leaking is the water that's on the two surfaces. If there's some foreign material that gets on those surfaces, now there's a path for that water to leak out. So water quality is uh, essential for good pump uh, service and uh, preventing leakage in your seals. So we'll take the pump apart to get hey, to it. Hey, before we do that, Bill, how many times have you taught other technicians how to replace a pump seal? How many days in a year? 365 that, sometimes. That's close. Mm -hmm. That's close. It's not difficult. Uh, there are certain things you need to be careful with. And that's what we're going to show you today. That's okay. what you need to be careful with because okay. uh, it's, not, it's not hard. Uh, it's just certain things you got to watch out for, and I'm going to show you what those are so that there's no problems. So to get going, I mean, I see you got a few things here on the table. Not very much. So you want to kind of walk me through what we got here? Well, we've got the, the pump seal kit. If you're going to change a pump seal, you have a pump seal kit. And it comes with the seal, both the stationary seal and the rotating seal. Uh, you got your gaskets for the casing, and uh, in this kit, you get a new uh, impeller cap screw and washer. Uh, one thing about this pump, which is unique to other pumps, the impeller cap screw is a left-hand thread screw. It's the only pump that we have that takes the left-hand screw. So on this pump here, it's not lefty-loosey. So... Uh, if you, if or, you, or righty tighty. Or righty tighty. If you if you try to take it off in a conventional manner, you will shear this cap screw, and now you have damaged another part on the pump that you can replace, but it's not supposed to be replaced, and it's rather expensive. It's the second most expensive piece on the pump yeah. in parts. Uh, pump parts would include the impeller, which you hardly ever have to change unless you're changing the uh, capacity of your pump. If you need to have more flow or more head, we get that through the impeller size. Uh, the, in this pump here, uh, it takes a standard motor, C-face motor is what it is, and it has a shaft adapter that the impeller is attached to instead of the motor shaft itself. And that shaft adapter is a piece, it can be uh, purchased as a part, but it is a, a machined piece and it, it's rather expensive so uh, you need to be careful when you're removing your seal to make sure you remember that you have a left-hand thread on your cap screw of the impeller. All right. Hey, do you, do, you, uh, do you always buy the whole kit or do you just buy the seal? You, it comes as a kit. You, okay. can't buy that. you can't buy this seal just by itself. It comes in the kit. So might as well just get the whole kit. And on the larger pumps that we have, uh, well, there is another piece that, that you need uh, that's not in the seal. It's called the shaft adapt. I mean, the uh, shaft sleeve. I'll show it to you when we take it apart. Because all of the all the seals have a uh, adhesive on the seal elastomer, uh -huh. we lubricate it to put it on, but it will adhere to the shaft sleeve, so it's very difficult to get off once it gets set. That's another thing about uh, the leakage problem. You don't have a leakage problem because your rotating seal is adhered to the shaft sleeve, okay. so there's no way for the water to get around the rotating seal onto the shaft. It has to be seal to seal surfaces the only place you have the water. Okay. And uh, so probably need to replace the shaft sleeve along with a seal kit. It is a separate part and we always try to uh, encourage the, the customer to do that. Uh, what they can do is when they take it apart, they can take the old seal and at their leisure, remove the seal from the shaft sleeve 
and check it to see if it can be reused. If it can, they can reuse it the next time. Okay. And it won't have to won't have it. But it takes a little time to clean it up. Okay. And uh, what you're doing when you're taking these apart, you're taking your your system down, uh, and you want to get it back as quickly as you can. So replacing a seal and shaft sleeve is the best way to do it. Okay. You got a paper towel. You got a uh, uh, a, a socket set. Um, you got a wrench. You got a uh, a hammer and a uh, an adjustable wrench. And and what's this here? That is my lubricant that I use. It comes okay. the the shaft seal kit comes with a lubricant. It is a non petroleum based lubricant. Uh, that's the the big thing about these seals is uh, sometimes people will use the wrong type of lubricant or even just the oil that's in your skin mm -hmm. can leave a print on the seal. Okay. And if that prints there, uh, that's an uh, an avenue for the water to get out. Gotcha. And so just just touching the seals with your hand. Uh, can leave a mark on it that allows it to. Uh, but you to like just simple dial liquid soap. If it'll clean a, a duck, if you'll get the oil off of a duck, it's great for a seal. All right, I can't wait yeah. to. I can't wait to see it. Well, it's it's very simple. First thing we do is we always take all the bolts off from the 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 cover plate because you have a casing, you have the cover plate, and you have the motor is the three pieces of the pump design. So we we move the bolts from the cover. We lift the cover and motor out of the pump along with the impeller. All that is in one piece when you take it apart. All right. So you have, you have that there. All right. Hand me the, the wrench. The, the, this one. Yep, yeah, the other one. Give me that one. This one. All right. Here again, it's a righty Lucy, not a lefty Lucy. So we take and we turn. We turn this to the right, which is normally you're tightening it, but on this one you're loosening it. You just lift the impeller up and that will expose the spring, which puts the pressure on the seal. The rotating seal down onto the stationary seal. All right. Now, what I do to help with this, I, I try to use everything to my advantage because this thing here is going to be kind of tight. The seal will be, even though it leaks, it will still be tight on on the surface. And so, I use the cover to pull it off because you've got something you can grab it with instead of your fingers. And what's going to happen is that the, the, you can get the shaft seal and the sleeve sometimes will come off with it because the, that rotating seal is adhered to the sleeve because that is part of the sealing of the, the seal itself so you don't have a water path for it to escape. We're trying to keep all the water inside the pump casing on that and uh, like I said the, the biggest problem you have is dirty water uh, and on heating systems you have steel pipe and if you don't have good water treatment you could have rusting happening in your system and if uh, for some reason you would do some uh, repairs or some expansion to the system you have to shut the water off when you turn the water back on, now that pressure that's coming in will loosen up any materials that may be in the pipe system. But you take the bolts off that hold the cover onto the motor, you lift all that up. So if you have multiple pumps start to leak at the same time, you might have a, a water quality or a, a system issue and you probably need to check out. Or, or if you've, if you've uh, had some low flow conditions or no flow conditions, the water will heat up in the pump. And uh, when that water heats up, you can boil the water in the pump. And so work. explain that. That's when you valve off a pipe, mm -hmm. right? Let's say, let's say you go into a system, you're going to do a repair of some kind, and so you shut the water off. And you turn the pump off. Uh, you make your repairs, and you go back and you say, okay, I've got my repairs done. I need to get my pump running. You put, turn your pump on, but you don't open your valves. Yeah. You don't have your flow. Mm -hmm. The pump's going to run. And the energy that the pump generates is now going to be transferred into the water 
And so that water is going to heat up and it can, it can get above boiling point mm -hmm. in, in the pump. And uh, these seals are, are good up to about 210 degrees. But uh, when you get above that, you're going to deteriorate. Uh, the seal is uh, two pieces. The rotating seal is a carbon surface. And it mates against the stationary seal, which is a ceramic surface. All right. So when you, what I did, I just pushed down on the seal and it, the seal went through. I mean, the sleeve, the seal went through. The uh, stationary seal came off. Now I flip this over and you can take and punch out the rotating seal excuse me, the stationary seal, and it is in a rubber cup okay. to hold it. So it's, it's ceramic, and the rotating seal is carbon. So the two surfaces made together, and there's a film of water that stays on there to, to keep this from leaking. All right, so we've, we've gotten rid of the old one. Uh, what we do, I take a little bit of soap, just a very little bit. Doesn't I, did, take, I did that hand off right. You did better. good. That was better than all right, uh, just a little, just a little dot. Now I'm very careful not to touch the surface, because, like I say, depending on your chemical makeup, you could have enough oil in your skin uh, that you'll leave a print. Now, when we take them apart, they're not all new, so you may get dirty a little bit when you take this stuff apart. Now, before you put the seal back in, I suggest going and washing your hands. If you're using rubber gloves, that's even better. But make sure that you're clean when you're working on this. I'm going to put just a little dab, I use the dial soap, and put that on the, the rubber that's on the uh, stationary seal. It goes right back into the cavity, all right? And you want to be careful not to touch this, so you need to take a paper towel. There's a piece of cardboard that's in the, in the seal kit that comes with the seal, and you can put it on top of it and just push it down into the, into the receiver. So it's just pushed right down into the receiver where it goes. All right, that part's done. The shaft sleeve goes back over the shaft adapter. It sits there. Then your cover goes back on. Okay. All right, we have the rotating seal. All right, it has an elastomer on the back side. It has the carbon seal on the front side. Uh, so what I do there, I take and put just another little dot of some soap. Because uh, when you turn the water, when you turn the pump on, that water now is going to flush out. That. So you're putting the soap on the on the inside. I put it on the very inside of the rubber on the back gotcha. side. Yeah. Okay, see the, the surface on this side. It goes down. This goes up. You got the little T sticking down. Right. Yeah. And then, I put a little bit just on the edge, just sort of, it'll go down there good. You put that on, you push it down, you're ready to go. All right. Um, you put your spring, goes back on that. Then there's a spring washer that goes on that. All right. The impeller on these pumps, the impeller is not a keyed impeller. It's a switch. All right. So you, you put it down and it swedges down. You have your cap screw. Tell me what a swedge is. A swedge is, I call it a reverse uh, flare. Oh, a reverse flare, gotcha. That's what I call yeah. it. The, the, what they do, they machine it down to where it's a, it's like a bullet. If you look at a bullet, a bullet's kind of like a swedge, yeah. okay? And what it does, that, that tightens it up when it goes down because as it gets tighter, as you tighten it down, it gets tighter. All right, so you, you put your impeller back on there. All right, you usually have to take and hold the shaft adapter to keep it from turning because if you try to turn this thing, it's not tight yet. So the impeller is not down on it. And what's going to happen is that you are going to turn the motor shaft. So we're holding the motor shaft with our channel locks as we tighten our impeller down. And lefty tighty. And we turn it counterclockwise to tighten it up. Okay. 
Okay, and so we've got that tightened up. How tight do you need it? Uh, it needs. You don't want to over tighten it. Uh, it's got the cap screw has a Loctite on it from the factory. Okay. So you just want to get it just real good and snug. It's not going to back out because what's going to happen on these pumps? The reason it's got that left hand thread. Mm -hmm. These pumps run backwards. The design of them. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, so it's only getting tighter. it tightens. It tightens up. It's, it's only getting tighter. It's only getting yeah. tighter. All right. So that's what you do. All right. Then you take and just flip it back over. Now I would normally help you, but you're pretty self-sufficient, Bill. Well, well, let me take it back. I'm supposed to, I got to put my bolts back in for the motor because my cover is not secure to my motor. You secure that cover back to the motor and it's ready to go. It's all in one piece. Because that's the beauty of it. You can take this out in one piece and work on it on a table instead of having to work on it in place. The pump stays in place. You don't yeah. take it out of the pipe. It stays there. And uh, sometimes these are, are all, you can get to them off the ground. Sometimes you got to get up on a ladder. Sometimes you have to come on a scaffold. Sometimes you can even get in, in a lift and get up there and take it. And you take it out of position, bring it back down. You can work on it on a table. After you get it back together, all you got to do is take it back up, take it to the pump location. So being being clean is important, and you can take this to a clean a clean area, a clean environment. Yep. To do it. It's better to work in a clean environment with everything. All right, it comes with a new casing gasket. Uh, the other thing, the fit on the cover and the pump is a machine fit. There is a groove in the casing for the gasket. The gasket needs to be placed in the casing instead of trying to fit it onto the cover. The cover is smooth. There's nothing to hold it. There's nothing to hold it. Now see this goes... It goes in that part, not this part. I got you. And see, it, it moves around. Yeah. And what happens if you try to put it on this and your pump's in place, you can't move it? All right. Now, when you pick this up, where's that gasket going? It's going wherever it wants to. And when you come up here and set this down, all right, the eye of the impeller goes into the casing in a machine point. All right. And it... Uh, if the gasket's not in place, it'll cut it. And the other day, I gave a customer a seal kit, see him on his way, and uh, he comes back. Well, he makes a phone call. He says, uh, have you got another casing gasket? I cut that one. I said, okay, yeah, I think I got another one I can find you. So being careful with what you're doing, taking your time, clean environment, very simple on doing this. Uh, doesn't take long. If you take your time to do it right the first time. Uh, the old saying is, if you'll take your time and do it right the first time, you won't have to spend extra time doing it the second time. Doing it twice, nothing's longer than that. That's, 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 and it doesn't, it's not productive. No, it's not. All right. And uh, most times, customers don't like people doing things two times either. Uh, so that's, uh, that, that's what it is about the seal kits. They're, they're not difficult. Uh, big thing here again is clean environment, uh, making sure of what you're doing, taking your time. And on these pumps, left hand thread on the impellers. You have a clean environment and your hands are clean and follow directions, take your time. That's how you change the seal. That's it. No All right. Good. All right. That's a wrap. Thanks, Bill.